Thanks for joining me for another video. It's been a little while since my last upload, but I wanted to take my time on this project just so I wasn't cramming it in and doing it in a couple of weeks. I just wanted to fit it in around the rest of my life. This was another present. This was a bath caddy, which something to put a book and a, a pint glass on, um, just chill out in the bath and have a, a bit of a, a table spread over the bath to store a few things. It was supposed to be a Christmas present. I didn't quite get it ready in time for Christmas, but I've known this person a long time, so I thought I could get away with it. And since I finished it and presented it, I've been putting the video together. I've done the video in a slightly different way. In my previous videos, I've talked through the process whilst making it. This one, I wanted to watch videos, TV to entertain me whilst I worked. So instead, I've added the audio in afterwards. But it does have the extra advantage that the uh, the video of me doing the practical side of it, I can show it closer up because I don't have to include my face in so it means you get the advantage as well of not having to look at me the whole time. So I hope that works and we'll move on to the project. These are some scraps of wood that I salvaged. They are redwood, pine, slow grown with quite a close grain. I had these in mind for the bottom and the middle layers of the piece, but I still needed something for the top layer. So headed to a timber yard and picked up some slightly lower quality white wood, uh, quick grown, but the thickness matched, what I, uh, matched the timber I already had and it's what the timber yard had, so I figured it would do. First I needed to plane the salvage strips. I had to get them to the same thickness as each other, get rid of the varnish off one side and the saw marks on the other side where I'd split the wood into separate pieces. There were also some screw holes which I filled in. This is just a one part wood filler which I then sanded by hand when dry. I've just got some 150 grit handheld block. The filler comes off quite easily, just sands it smooth with my planed wood. As part of the design, I added a couple of small blocks underneath the end of the bottom layer. These were the offcuts left when I cut the bottom strips down. Uh, these all, um, the, below the bottom layer there's a couple of pieces to stop the caddy sliding off the bath. This won't actually stop it sliding off the bath, um, the other block will do that. But it'll stop it twisting when in place and it'll make it look quite nice. Uh, these were glued on, but they'll be strengthened later on by a dowel. I'm using PU glue here, as it's waterproof. It's the Gorilla Glue. It expands five times, so when dry, the excess needs to be chiselled off. And then the, then the finish is sanded over, just to get rid of any excess glue. Just spread the glue about a bit, and then clamp the pieces together while the glue goes off.
the other runners that go underneath that hold it onto the bath I wanted these to be adjustable I had taken measurements for the bath but just in case the measurements weren't completely spot on or the bath was actually curved so in case in case it needed to be moved up and still held tight I put them on a slider so that meant putting a couple of bolts through the bottom layer and into the into the little sliding runners and uh, I decided to just add a butterfly nut on the bottom for adjustment. The top of the nut is going to be hidden inside the unit so I had to chisel a couple of holes through for the bolt shaft and then just above that but still in the wood I needed a wider slot for the bolt head that's the one I'm making now. I did the bolt head first and then carried on through the wood with a thinner section. These, these holes will have a little cap on top, a separate bit of wood which will be glued down with a couple of pins in so that the bolt head won't lift out because that will all be sealed within the wood. So if the bolt was to pop out there'd be a problem with putting it, well, p fixing it back together again because this is all going to be sealed within the unit. I'm chiselling it like I'd do a mortise hole, except I don't have a mortise chisel, so I'm neatening up the size as I go down because I was using a bevel edge chisel, which doesn't quite have the square sides. So a few taps all the way along the length, and then using a larger chisel to do straight lines down the sides. Also my smaller chisel isn't quite the same size as the hole I'm making. So this is the best way i found to do it. Just taking out the waist here so I can see where I'm at. And then we've gone into high speed for a little bit just so that I can finish it off without anyone getting bored. Now the exciting bit is moving on to the top layer. I want to do the top layer before the middle one as the top layer sets the size for everything else. I'm making these jigsaw pieces and I'm making a template first so that I can cut out the main pieces from the template. The template was made with a jigsaw with a fine blade so I can turn it and then I'm just having a look to see if this sits neatly on the wood that I'm using for the top there. As you can see there's a bit of a rock so I need to plane it off, plane it flat. So take my straight edge, I'm marking all the high points here. I'm going to draw lines across the high parts of the pencil so that I can plane them off and then recheck. I don't have many machines, I've got a router but I don't have a thickness or, or anything like that. But I quite like working with hand tools. So I'm using my plane and flattening the wood by hand. A jack plane would be better for this but I, uh, I have a smoothing plane and some smaller ones. So smoothing plane it is. The timber was fairly cupped on one side and convex on the other but it because it was thicker than the other timber I'm matching it to it was no trouble to plane it until it was flat and that would actually make it the same thickness as the other timber or at least close to and reduce the weight as well of the final product <laughs> I've 
got some double sided tape here to stick to the back of the template so that I can stick it onto the wood and then cut out the main piece from the template. As you can see I've got a very thin double sided tape so it took ages to stick it all on. I think next time I'll get some thicker stuff. I didn't want to cut out the main piece the same way that I cut out the template because the wood's thicker and I didn't think the jigsaw blade would go would stay straight. The MDF's only six or well, six or nine mil it was, so uh, it was quite easy to cut that out quite neatly. But to do the main piece, I wanted to take the template on, cut it out roughly with a jigsaw, and then finish it on the router on my router table so I got a nice good finish round the curves. Just sticking the template to the wood now. The wood's now flat. I'm just lining my piece up with the edge to reduce the area that I need to cut because it's a square edge on the wood and pressing it down nice and firmly. Then my rough cut with a jigsaw. Still using the fine blade so that I can turn the corners tight enough. I haven't got a dust bag for the uh, for the jigsaw. I'm using it outside here. Pretty much all the dust just blows away again afterwards. and we can see the piece cut out. Now there's plenty of different ways of using a router. You can use it freehand or use a fence or put it in a router table as I'm doing here. I've got it mounted upside down with the cutter sticking up the middle and this is a bearing cutter. The router table itself you can use in different ways. You can put a fence on the back and run your timber along it if you're cutting a line straight along it or as seen here I've got a lead on pin which is good for freehand cutting especially with a template like this. I've adjusted the height of the bearing so that it's the bearings running along the template and the cutters cutting into the timber. Once again I'm outside so I haven't bothered with the dust extraction I'm just letting it blow away. I tried using my hoover into the dust extraction nozzle, um, but the hoover tends to overheat, so I found this a better option. I had three pieces to cut out. The first one wasn't the neatest, but the more I did, the neater they got. Using the lead-on pin, 
just gives you a bit of protection from where the piece is going, keeps it safer to, for you to use, and helps you rest the piece against something as you draw it towards the cutter. High speed, it's not me being, uh, not me being reckless. Now what I discovered was that when you do these outside corners, as you'll see here, that bit's okay, but as I came round the corner, it's actually going into the grain the wrong way and a bit flips off. Well, as you can see, hopefully see, there's a little bit missing round that corner, which I glued back on. And for the later ones, I did the end of the curve before I did the beginning, so cutting into the grain, cutting with the grain. And then just finishing off along the straight edges. I've got my ear defenders on, it's a pretty noisy thing this. And that's the bit where it flips off. The bit I glued back on. And learnt. Learn as you go along. Now it's good to be able to improvise when you're making things. I don't have a spoke shave, which would be good for smoothing off the rounded edges and probably wouldn't have fitted in this hole anyway so I've got a rolling pin and a bit of sandpaper to get rid of the saw marks in the awkward areas. On to the middle layer now. I wanted to set up the marking side of the mortise gauge to the centre of the wood so to do this I roughly centred it by eye and put a dot in the centre of the wood from each side, so putting the stock of the marking gauge on each side of the wood. And then if the points aren't exactly in the right, the same place as each other, which they're not, then slide the stock so that you can have the pin in between the two points and then it should be completely centred. You can then just tighten up the thumb screw and check everything is still in the same place, so check the pin is still pointing at that centre hole. Then I use the gauge to mark the centre of the timber. From now on I always place the stock against the face side because you know this one's flat and square. Checked it was square to the top to start otherwise I would have had to plane it a bit. So I'm drawing a centre mark and then I've got a pencil to draw down this line to make the centre line more obvious. This line gives me a guide to cut down to split the timber into two. This gives me two matching pieces that will form the edges of the middle layer. Then I've got some smaller strips which will finish the grid that the upper pieces rest on. So the middle layer is the grid and the grid matches up with where the jigsaw pieces will go. That will become more obvious when I assemble it later on. So as you can see here I've clamped the wood to my workmate and I've already started the handsaw cut, I'm just moving it up and now I'm going to finish the cut. I think we're going high speed again here. Perhaps. Well that looks normal to me. I decided to handsaw it rather than jigsaw it just gives a straighter, straighter cut. And once this is cut, I put the two pieces together and gave it a quick plane to even them up. Putting them together enables a more accurate finish across the two because if one is, if your cut wasn't quite straight, one will be angled up, one will be angled down and as soon as they're both flat together they should be fairly square which you can then check with the square itself. Now we get to see the framework that I mentioned. I'm assembling the middle layer here so I roughly place the bottom and the middle pieces to start and then place the jigsaw pieces on the top layer as these are the ones that set the position of everything else. The two outer pieces are flush with the outer edges and the middle jigsaw piece is centred equally between the other two. 
and then line up the framework of the middle layer with the edge of the jigsaw pieces because there's a piece on each side then I lift off all the jigsaw pieces, being careful not to knock the positions of the framework where I've just placed it. And I mark where all the joints will be in the framework. So I'm marking across from one bit of wood to another, and this is where my dowels will go. Once I have a little mark, I need to square it down both sides of the long strips and down the end of the short strips. And I make a mark a point equal distance down all of them. I think the wood was 18mm so mine's about 10mm down. It doesn't have to be exactly central as long as they match up on both sides. The square I'm using here is a 2 inch engineer square. It's perfect for jobs like this because the stock still has enough of the wood to sit on without the weight of it pulling it off square. Once everything's marked out, I just need to drill the holes for my dowel. I've placed a bit of tape on the drill bit to match half the length of the dowel that I will cut so that the glue will be able to bond the dowel into the hole. I've got holes to drill in the end of all the short pieces and in the sides of the long pieces. the same distance into both then I can cut my lengths of dowel I think I went about 9mm into each bit of timber with the drill bit and so my dowel pieces are just under 18mm leaving a little bit of space for the glue I wanted the dowel reinforcement because the glue should be strong enough but just in case there are any extra forces on it. Now all the holes are drilled, I did a dry fit and now I'm assembling for real. So I'm using PU glue again. The dowel isn't hugely snug because the drill bit is very slightly different to the dowel. Well the dowel isn't completely round but it doesn't need to be a completely snug fit. The joints here won't be taking any strain and the expansion of the glue will also help to fill the space. It also helps put it together. If everything was super snug there's six dowels on one side and six on the other so getting them all in at the same time would be quite awkward otherwise. So there's two short pieces per upper jigsaw piece, as I mentioned earlier, one at each side, lined up with the edges. So when you look down the jigsaw pieces, you should see them all lined up. Just makes for a neat finish. And just popping the top pieces of dowel in, gluing the holes on the other piece. And um, when everything's all together, I clamp it all up and wait for the glue to go off. Now the top layer jigsaw pieces have holes in them where the jigsaw, well the, the jigsaw holes. And it looks a little odd if you can see the framework lay through those. So I wanted to cut matching holes in the framework. I marked out where from the jigsaw pieces and cut out the curve with the coping saw. Then I need to sand the saw marks off again. So instead of a rolling pin this time I used a chisel and wrap my sanding block around the back of the chisel. 
I don't have a power sander, but I think it would have struggled to go around the corners. So this worked perfectly fine. <laughs>